Hello, and welcome back to Future Tunes. For those new here, uh, or just unfamiliar, this is where we explore the intersection of retrofuturism and animation by looking at past depictions of the future seen in cartoons. Today, we are heading back to mid-20th century America with the films of John Sutherland, some good old-fashioned 1950s corporate futurism. Before we get into that though, this and every video on this channel was made possible by our patrons over at patreon.com slash pixelportraits. We do not run ads, we are 100% viewer supported, and in exchange offer a ton of exclusive content. So if you like what we do and want to help make it happen, please consider supporting us, patreon.com slash pixelportraits. With that plug out of the way, let's head back to the future. After nearly two decades of depression and war, America entered the 1950s on a high note. The economy was booming, this was the golden age of capitalism, and a life unimaginable just a few short years earlier, uh, or today, <laughs> was suddenly possible. There was a future, a good one far beyond our wildest dreams, far beyond the stars even. Technology had advanced to the point where space travel was quickly becoming a reality, and all the possibilities that came with that, exploring new worlds, the infinite sea of the universe, lay before us. Atomic energy, which had won the war, was now going to usher in a new era of safe and clean living. Everything would be nuclear, uh, from medicine to automobiles. Profits and growth were going to increase forever. Life would just keep getting better. Uh, that is, unless the evil communists had their way. Their very existence threatened this way of life, and they had to be stopped at all costs. At least, that's what people were being told. These aesthetics and ideas informed so much of the space age, or atomic age, whatever you want to call it. Companies used the future to sell their goods. In the 1950s and 60s, the future was extremely marketable. The world of tomorrow was available for purchase today. Now, a lot of what we look at with retrofuturism can be described as corporate propaganda. I say it all the time, retrofuturism is about the past, not the future, and what was being sold back then was optimism and convenience. These ads are not celebrating progress, they are pushing a product or a brand, associating it with being state of the art and promising it was here to stay for the next hundred years or thousand years. Very few things personify 1950s American spunk quite like the films produced by John Sutherland. His animated shorts, more often than not, celebrated America and its capitalist system. He also, apparently, produced the Mickey Mouse short The Birthday Party, and in a bizarre bit of trivia, he was allegedly also the voice of Bambi. Sutherland came up, uh, I believe, in an episode of Animation Propaganda, talking about capitalism in cartoons. Again, that was very much his gimmick, starting with 1948's Make Mine Freedom. In this, a snake oil salesman comes to an average American town, promising the residents a utopia if they sign over their lives and the lives of their children. He is selling bottles of ism, uh, communism could be capitalism as well, socialism, any system or ism, with the argument here being that individual freedom trumps all. While there could be some room for interpretation, uh, this film is definitely pro-capitalist as it celebrates the achievements of American enterprise. We see a vision of the world where a worker, an employer, a farmer, and a politician do sign their freedom away. The uh, massive hands of the state exploit their labor and uh, steal their goods, branding them with state-issued numbers. Seeing this, the citizens revolt against the salesmen and run them out of town, as if uh, what they saw couldn't happen in a capitalist system, or that everyone enjoys the same uh, quote-unquote freedom in that system, which obviously things are not that simple. Uh, now, we are not here to explore the merits uh, or failures of the capitalist system. We are here for retrofuturism, but it's important to see where Sutherland was coming from. He was pro-business, pro-free enterprise. Many of his films were sponsored by organizations that would benefit directly from positive PR. It is 100% corporate propaganda. Sutherland did his part in promoting nuclear energy in A is for Atom from 1952. This was produced for General Electric and explains what exactly an atom is. It also does its best to sell you on atomic energy. It contrasts the horrors of the atomic bomb uh, with this cute anthropomorphic atom. 
It does get a little more intense at the end with these uh, monolithic atomic men <laughs> that showcase all the different possible uses for atomic energy in farming and medicine, things General Electric had a vested interest in. In 1956, the American Petroleum Institute sponsored Destination Earth. The API is a lobbying group for the oil industry. Uh, it's no surprise, this is a pro-oil film. It takes us to a colony on Mars, apparently an authoritarian society run by the great Og. Og is omnipresent. Everything is named after him, uh, stores, the stadium. Citizens are forced to attend his speech, featuring Colonel Cosmic, who travels uh, to different planets. He just got back from Earth, specifically the United States. He went there to discover the secrets as to why America is so great. We see the Martians uh, struggle with automobiles, uh, historically fueling automobiles. During his trip, Colonel Cosmic learns oil is behind America's prosperity. Its supply is apparently endless, and it does so many amazing things, uh, makes so many useful things. Given that it is produced by Sutherland, uh, free market capitalism is also celebrated. The Martians are sold on oil, and the short ends with them setting out and drilling for oil on their planet. There are some great futuristic designs here, uh, lots of spirals and domes, uh, not an explicit depiction of the future, but an otherwise advanced society becoming more advanced after learning about oil is the uh, takeaway here. The last piece we are going to be looking at is also from 1956, the automotive information film Your Safety First. This was brought to us by the Automobile Manufacturers Association. Now this hits pretty fast with its innovations. Uh, we got a futuristic newspaper, the Futureville Press, which informs us we are in the year 2000. The newspaper has uh, scrolling headlines like a Chiron crawl. One says a space liner landed on the moon, so space travel exists in this future. Uh, there is also some kind of smell vision on the ads uh, in the paper, moving graphics, uh, advertisements for the 2001 Turbo Pusher 2. A computer uh, that keeps track of records and purchases, I'm assuming other things as well. Uh, two hour work days, three days a week, pretty sweet. If this sequence looks familiar, it's because this short is uh, basically a pilot for the Jetsons. Uh, George O'Hanlon, who voiced George Jetson, even voices the main character. Uh, self driving cars, video calling between vehicles, uh, the highways giving way to skyways. Life was only going to get better. Our main character lives in a house with a four-car garage, service robots, meals in pill form, uh, 3D television, which was actually a fad in the late 2000s. This is an information film on vehicle safety, and it is framed around a TV special that goes through the history of the automobile up into the 1950s and what uh, they saw as beyond. As such, we see a lot of different futuristic models uh, for vehicles that follow a similar design. Uh, domed windshields, again, self-driving, uh, hybrid flying, and uh, yeah. The uh, optimism of the 1950s and 60s would eventually give way to the anxiety and panic of the 1970s uh, with the energy crisis, climate change, but that's a story for another time. This is going to wrap it up for today. I will post links in the description if you want to check these shorts out, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a show just like this, feature film, looking at past depictions of the future, seen in movies. Five bucks a month gets you access to that, and dozens of other videos and series, and helps keep these videos coming out regularly. That is patreon.com slash pixelportraits. As always, thank you so much for interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.